Hey there, so this is our little group meeting conversation uh, over the family resiliency assignment dealing with the movie that we were supposed to watch. Uh, Josh Magleby. Bree Solomon. Caleb Hyatt. So just in case, Sister Greenwood, you uh, didn't recognize our faces with the names. Um, the movie that we decided to watch was Soul Surfer, uh, which was very good, just to throw that out there. Uh, and I guess we'll just go ahead and go right in to the question questions, number uh, yeah, question number one. Is, identify every level of the family cycle in the movie and explain why and what situation this is. So some of the, the family cycles that we thought of were uh, parenthood, school-aged children, and adolescence. Uh, dealing with, uh, I'll briefly talk about parenthood, to where the movie starts off with home videos. Um, with with the kids, you know, when they were very young, being on the beach, just trying to learn how to surf. And so we talked about parenthood with the parents of Bethany at that mm-hmm. point in time. And then it also segued into when she was a little older and, and she started learning more things and she was definitely school-aged children and, and exploring the world around her, exactly. especially through surfing. Can you explain about adolescence? Um, Well, she gets into her adolescence, and all she wants to do is surf. Uh, They take up homeschooling so that she can surf all day. Um, There's a a section in the movie where uh, she uh, goes out to surf, and it makes her late for church. (laughs) <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And so, so, so we can just see how the movie transitioned from, from the parenthood to the school age and then to where the main focus was within the adolescent stage, you know, her 15, 16 year old yes, stage. So question number two, identify and explain any rituals, traditions, habits, patterns found within the family and explain why you would define them as such. Um, and the first thing that we obviously that pops out to you surfing. is surfing. Um, the whole family starts off surfing from the beginning of the movie, and then you all and then you find them surfing throughout multiple mm-hmm. parts. And it's not of the just movie. her; it's the whole family. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and it's the whole family mm-hmm. uh, that's in there. Uh, some other rituals were praying as a family. Um, they prayed before their meals, um, which is definitely a ritual for especially uh, for people especially who are churchgoers and they did show that they went to church on a regular basis, which is also an example of another ritual that they did. Some other things they did were eat meals together mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, at least to add in a little church perspective from our religion, I thought it was really cool you know, to be able to see and how they implemented those things within the movie mm-hmm. and and they weren't shy about showing that exactly. this family did go to church and that the, religious exactly family. it was it, it was really cool to see how those were some of the main rituals and then the recreational activity mm-hmm. with surfing uh, is what brought that whole family together um i think as yeah. far as the uh, corn balance i think that uh the eating the meals and the and um you know, going to church and praying and obviously surfing were all really just core activities. And then she gets involved with the, the youth group mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, that, that does a lot of service. And I think that provided a lot of balance, Yeah. So uh, at least for her and her life. <laughs> yeah, so just as we discussed earlier that a lot of the activities ended up becoming core mm-hmm. too because that's what the family did all the time. And we discussed how what surfing started off as a balance. Yeah, maybe maybe it's something that the parents introduced to them because it started out as the parents, that's what they did. Um, that's what they bonded over before they got married. And maybe they, they showed it to their children as just something that they could do and didn't expect anything for them to what, love it or, mm-hmm. or hate it. And then eventually the whole family started loving it and it's something that they did almost daily um, mm-hmm. So it became something a core. Yep, and then and, and of course Caleb talked about how she eventually went on that missionary trip to Thailand, yeah, you know, to, to help them, which is that balance activity of doing something, not at a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what 
benefit detriment could um, these traditions, habits, or whatever have for the family? I think we already talked about, um, you talked about the meals. Eating meals as a family, especially within um, our religion, is, is very important in order for us to stay connected, um, to find out about each other's lives, what's going on, and um, doing that together as a family, just sitting all together, is helps them create that relationship. I think it was interesting to note that when they went uh, night surfing without permission, <clears throat> they came home and their mom already knew about it. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a good sign of a, a family that's that's very well connected and uh, that knows what's going on within their family unit. Mm -hmm. True. I like that. Um, now we get into the crucibles for the difficult parts um, that happen. Mm -hmm. And let's let's start off with the main one. Of course, it's her losing her arm. Um, and that act uh, led to a whole bunch of different obstacles that they had to run into. Um, one of them was the media attention that they received afterwards. They had to find some other ways to function normally with all of the attention that she's getting. <laughs> yep. Um, there are some other crucibles that we're going to talk more just in the reactions, but the main one is her losing her arm and then that affecting the rest of their family life and putting some strain mm -hmm. on and them. It really affected the way, you know, that she was, you know, had to be able to do things and, uh, mm -hmm. so I just found that was really interesting as far as, you know, well, what can you do with one arm? Yeah. yeah. And then one other that we talked about, we have here, written here, was the tsunami. It was actually a, a crucible. It wasn't necessarily... The main one. It wasn't a main one, and it wasn't a, a crucible for Bethany mm -hmm. and them. Or but the it, family. Yeah, but, but it was definitely a big part of the movie um, to help Bethany's reaction to her crucible uh -huh. um, and to understand that other people go through hard things. And um, surfing is it everything in her life. <laughs> exactly. So... What were some of uh, the reactions because... Of the arm? Yep. Um, one of them, uh, this, the friend who's with her, um, they were all really worried about her, especially her family. Um, everything, everyone that was close to her definitely stood up and supported her. That was one reaction. Um, I remember in the movie, she was coming home from the hospital, and they had put surfboards along the road. It says, Welcome home, mm. Bethany, and we love we you. We love you. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I would want my family or someone to do that to me if I was seriously injured. I think yeah. another thing was, uh, I found it interesting that her friend that was surfing with her when uh, her arm got bit off, her friend didn't really know how to take it, and really just freaked out and that really worried Bethany uh, when she was in the hospital because she was waiting for her best friend to come yeah. and her best friend wouldn't show up. Mm. That's true. And so when she finally did, she was able, you know, they were able to reconnect and start building a, a better foundation, I guess, mm. off of, you know, from, from the previous to the, to the now. Yeah. Some of the other reactions, just really quick, um, were the way that the, the family reacted as well. Mm. Dad, dad tried to treat her just the same, you know, mm -hmm. everything's going to be okay, it'll be right back to normal, mom coddled her a little bit more, mm -hmm. let's, let's take things a little slow, maybe, you know, um, tried to hold her back just a little bit, not necessarily as a restrict, you can't do this anymore, but just take your time, yeah. and then we also saw um, the brothers, um, or at least one of them, Noah, like at the scene when they're in the hospital eating food, he, gets all upset and mm -hmm. so that's that's where that strain came in um with some of these reactions but they did change throughout they, the movie yeah, they, they, they eventually grew together to do with it. <laughs> exactly i really like what the mom said at the beginning um they're in the car um well and the she's already went in the house with their brothers and the dad is mm. like what are we gonna do and and the mom said well we do what we did when Noah came home, and we had no idea what we were doing. We take it day by day. And I really like that because it's definitely a day-by-day -day process, and they learned over time how to deal with um, how to treat her normally and what to do around her. Which I think goes right into the, the next question about what the long-term effects were mm -hmm. based off the reaction. So it started off 
you know, like we said, people are straining, freaking out. Mm -hmm. But because of that, we'll take it day by day reaction. Yeah. <laughs> that that allowed them to end up where they were in the movie to where we now, in hindsight, the movie was created a, a few years ago, you know, a few years ago, the accident happened mm -hmm. back in probably 2003 or 2004. And at the end of the movie, they kind of update you what's happened with Bethany. So you've been able to see because of these reactions, she's been able to overcome. Mm -hmm. She's surfing, competing, one of the best at her sport. And so we've been able to see how that long-term effect because of their reactions of take it day by day, we will be together, we'll support one another. Mm -hmm that family is still together. Um, and it really increased their, their unity as a family, which is mm -hmm. awesome to see because a lot of times when something like that happens, it, it really just destroys the family. Because they don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so how could the family have positive outcomes from the crucible? Well, I think we just talked about that. Mm -hmm. They grew together and unity as a family. <laughs> yeah, it, it it could have been very easy for for Beth and you to give up on everything and for her to wallow in self pity and yeah. all this other stuff, but so they what did not do that. would you <coughs> give the family? Or what how would you offer to help them? Um well there's a lot of uh, the counsel that was given to them in the movie. In yeah. the movie, first of all the family had their own of um, take it day by day. Take it day by day. And then Carrie Underwood's character of the youth leader mm -hmm. also talked to Bethany. Um, and I can't remember exactly what was given, but, you know, scriptures were also given. Yeah. And that's that's one thing that I would do is, turn to the scriptures. is I would turn to the scriptures and I would counsel them of Heavenly Father, uh, especially for a family that doesn't believe in the Book of Mormon. I could even use 1 Corinthians 10, 13 of where Heavenly Father does not give us a temptation stronger or more than we can handle or we can substitute temptation as being a trial mm -hmm. uh, he will he will not give us something more than we can handle and it's hard to realize in the moment that we can actually handle that situation even though it is very very difficult mm -hmm. that's what i would give i would probably say something similar really is just that you know you know you can overcome hard things and that's really what they got at in the movie. Yeah, which is one thing that we find in the reading as well. Things take time. Mm -hmm. We can do hard things. Yeah. Um, another thing that I would probably tell the family, and it's what Carrie Underwood's character said, um, it was just find ways to include the, the person. Because their family definitely, because she found, um, at the beginning of the movie, she was trying to cut a tomato. And mm -hmm. it fell on the ground, and her mother is like, "Oh, I got it, I got it." So she was. At, her mother is trying to overcompensate for stuff that she couldn't do. And then towards the end of the movie, you saw her cutting a banana by herself. And it's definitely giving up way, things like instead of trying to take over everything, try and and let her allow her to do things on her own, and and find ways to to do things with one arm because she's definitely going to have to live the rest of her life with just one arm and if you do everything for her she's not going to be super dependent on people but if you allow her to to explore what she now has with just one arm she's going to be able to be self-reliant yeah. I think something that was evident in that that we didn't you know cover a little bit ago was that you know when when they showed her the fake arm at first she really really wanted it and then once they put it on her she thought that it really just limited her too much. Mm -hmm. And and I thought that was that made a real big statement of, you know, I am not going to use this as a crutch. Mm -hmm. I like that. I didn't even think about that. Um, so before the crucible, where would the family be found in the circumplex model? I would say that they would be flexibly connected mm -hmm. because they definitely knew about each other and they were aware of each other, from especially from what we talked about, the, the family meals together. Um, and the mom was aware of when she would sneak out. Um, and there wasn't really a structure because I didn't really see a whole, a whole bunch of discipline going on, especially after she snuck out and the mother was aware of it. She still allowed her to go out and serve. Mm -hmm. um, okay. 
Um, and Caleb, what do you think about uh, where the family was after the crucible? I would say that they were that they were uh, flexibly en enmeshed, um, really, because they they've really really grown to grown a lot closer, and uh, you know they're so much more aware of each other. But they have that flexibility in there where you know they're able to adapt and they're able to i think that's probably what saved their family was that flexibility and mm -hmm. and really that that connection that they had with each other um and that just made it you know them grow closer and closer and without that flexibility you know families tend to fall apart yeah it was really good to see how they were already a tight-knit family and that connectedness um and how they depended on one another you know for love and and support but at the same time they were independent you know yeah. because Bethany was able to go out and do her own things you know, with her friends and whatnot mm -hmm. you know do the night surfing sneak out and then after the crucible you notice how she had she is to depend more yeah, and, it, much and it created that that loyalty made it much much stronger which is which is why we think that they ended up being in the flexibly enmeshed so where are the main characters found on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Um, so um, well, we, we when we talked about this, we we first we thought that it was just you know fulfillment, but when when the movie first starts, uh, it shows her you know wanting to get sponsored and always wanting to be with her friends, and that really fits in with the uh, with the self esteem portion of Maslow's hierarchy of needs where you know they just want to be social and 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 that and then as the movie goes on she kind of falls back down towards the uh you know the basic needs and and that and then as it goes on and she starts to realize that she can do things you know she really you know at the end she's really reached that that fulfillment that self fulfillment and that you know she's empowered and she knows what she can do um and how she can help other people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, give examples of recreation <clears throat> scenes in the movie and describe where the recreation would be found on Nash's Pyramid. You want to start us off, Um. Yeah, the, of course the main one is surfing. And um, we discussed surfing um, together as where would it be. And I originally thought it was just an active thing because that's something you're doing. Um, but it was brought up that in order for her to compete, she had to score points based on creativity and talent. Um, because you know, anyone can get up, well not anyone, I couldn't get up on a board and surf a wave. Um, but the beginners can get up on a board and surf a wave and just stand there. But when you become more and more active and creative within surfing, you can do a whole bunch of tricks and, and stunts on a, on a wave. And that's definitely more of the creative participation yep. I think she was also very uh, um, really a lot about service really uh, especially mm -hmm. towards you know the end where you know at first she didn't want to go uh, on that service mission but then after her her accident she she wanted to go and then there was that scene when uh, the day before Thanksgiving and she wanted to get back in the water she made breakfast for her family, and, and that was a trial for her, you know, dropping the oranges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and trying to get them, and everybody's frustrated with her, but she's still wanting to serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was really neat. <laughs> I, I would also say uh, that those are, that they have, part of the Nash's Pyramid is also emotional. Mm -hmm. um, emotional for some, you know, on the pyramid shows it's not as high, but... It definitely led her uh, to help uh, within her the Maslow's hierarchy of needs to reach that self actualization because of because of the emotionalness of where she was lost she didn't know what to do mm -hmm. so she went to Thailand you know and she did that out of the emotion mm -hmm. um, of having hard things happen to her trying to find things out so she went to church where she was comfortable with those friends and it uh, it helped her. Um, find herself because of that emotion and then making breakfast just like you said you know um she loves her family and mm -hmm. that emotion she has for them i think another really good scene from the movie is when 
um, she's on her bed and she has a Barbie doll with her and she breaks off one of the arm, the left arm, because that's what she looks like. And the mother comes in and she says, she's beautiful. And she's like, no, she doesn't. She's missing an arm. And who would find this attractive? And, and um, the mom's like, the right person would find that attractive. And um, then she pulls up the picture of the statue. And, and she is seen as one of the most prominent women um, in, throughout the world. And she's missing both of her arms. Um, and she said, see, she has one less arm than you, but she's still found attractive. And um, I think that's another benefit that she found from the losing her arm is because mm. she could still be the person she is and still found attractive mm. um, despite losing, missing a limb. Yeah. yeah. So uh, those are the questions that you were looking for. And um, so I just want to see, and that's, that's what we found from this movie. And it was... Really beneficial, I think, actually. To I, it, I've seen the movie before, and it opened up my eyes to new things. And it was their first time watching it, so it was really good. I loved it. <laughs> it was really, yeah. so. really good. Well, thanks for watching. That's it. Bye. See you later.